enjoy and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be working on the recycled poinsettia candle holders and these are actually soda bottles that I have worked with and tried to figure out how to manipulate into uh, poinsettias. They'd also be really pretty as magnolia flowers or blooms as well so that might be something to think about for something other than Christmas. Um, the first thing I did is I took a soda a bottle and these were actually done out of green. The ones I'm going to be done doing today are out of the clear ones um, and you can use either ones. You're going to see a little bit of the color difference. These are not going to be quite as red but I still think they're beautiful. And this little guy was actually made out of one individual serving size soda. I did the first part like we're going to do it and then I just made individual leaves and glued them in. So there's a lot of different ways that you can think about doing this. I removed my paper off and you're only going to be working with a little bit of it if it's in the way just run this under hot water and scrape it off with a knife that's fine. What I did was I took my painter's tape and I laid it right around this rim, one up, and cut that one, and I'll show you how I cut it. And then I also made one a little bit taller as well. This is actually done with th three soda bottles. And one flower, I did them all exactly the same size. And some I have made a little bit bigger, the second layer and this one we're doing on, I actually used a larger size soda just for the bottom. But you can do them all three. I would say start with individual ones. Right now the season, Christmas season, everybody's throwing party and having soda bottles around. So instead of throwing that out, check them out. I've also done a video with using this for a glass dome and it really looks like glass. You'll be amazed. And also a wreath done with this upper part up here, the green bottles. You also could use the plastic bottles as well. But check those out. They're a lot of fun. I just want you to be aware that they are out there. Now once you know, where you, and you could even just mark it. Say the first one, I wanted to go up that high. The second one, I'm great using a grease pencil. I want to go up that high. And the first ones, I stayed just under that line. So kind of get your size that you want to make it there. Now, we're going to do the leaves. See how this part goes out? That's going to be in the middle of our leaf. And we just kind of follow that line up the middle and make a point on both sides. You have five of those little nubs, which is really good because flowers are always an odd number of leaves. And we're just going to keep going like that. All the way around here. Okay, and there you can see our flower starting to sh take shape. Now to get these open, Take your hobby knife or a sharp knife and just poke a hole in them and just take your scissors and cut them all the way around. That doesn't need to be perfect because you're just getting it to where you can work with it. So now this guy I did. And I was actually going to draw on him, and I didn't. And I got got to get my tape going here and get it off. When I, the first flower I did, I did it the opposite. I had the part going down, and then I kind of decided I think it would work better. And if you follow these ridges, and you're going to keep these leaves nice and fat, so we want to keep them nice and fat. We don't want them thin. We want them to meet at a point. So do that real quick here. All right, once we've got our leaves drawn on, we're going to come in with just our regular craft scissors and we're going to cut these pieces out and make our leaves. 
Now get in here as far up as you can. And then it's going to start to get tough up there. I'll talk to you about that in just a minute here. The farther you get up these little crevices, the more your flower is going to lay down. So if you want one, the second layer laid down more than the first layer, cut it up there. Now that part's going to get really hard to cut and so you may get your wire cutters in there. I use my kitchen scissors as far as I can get in there. My big ones that cut tin and stuff. Be careful with your plastic. It can get sharp with the pointed edges sometimes. And I have been working on these for a few months trying to get them just like I would like them. I saw the design in the bottle and thought, you know, that would make a pretty flower. Remember to keep these leaves as fat as you can. You don't want them real straight and skinny up. We've got them nice and, and fat. And you can see I've got the little ridges in the bottle. The first ones I cut under it because I thought that would show up a little bit more and I'm not even going to worry about them. I'm going to see if I can cut up the center just a tad more. And if you need to lay, lay it down even more, you can warm it up. And while the plastic is warm, it's easy to cut as well. So we'll do that as we're working with it. Now, <clears throat> what I used to write on was a grease pencil. <clears throat> if you didn't have a grease pencil, and you needed to use a permanent marker, you're just going to have to cut inside of your permanent marker. <coughs> I've done a few too many of these videos lately. I'm probably really glittery. I'm going to hit the eggnog after all the videos are over. I think this coming year, seems like I always have a lot of Christmas videos I want to do. I'm going to start doing a video, a Christmas video. I might start in the spring and do one a month because I know a lot of you like to work on Christmas things throughout the year to get ready. So we might do something like that. Now, because of this is clear, even on the green ones, you only have to paint them on one side. So we're going to use bright red. You could use a different color if you wanted to. And I am going to sponge this on. The hardest part is getting down those crevices. So a lot of times I will come in and just punch that down there. I'm putting my bright red on with a regular craft sponge. I've wet it, it's damp. I wrung all the water out and I just put it directly into my paint. I'm not pouncing a lot of my paint off this time because we want this pretty well solid color. But these are not easy to use with a brush stroke and it wouldn't look good. So don't even try doing that with bright red. It takes several, several coats. All right, now I've got my first coat on and I wanna go ahead and get another coat. We're gonna be using our heat gun for this project. So the nice thing about the heat gun is we can go ahead and help our paint dry a little bit too. And the heat gun is how we shape our flower. Now if you were working on these, you would start your second piece and this could just dry naturally. And I've already got my second piece drying over there. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and do a second layer here. Again, I'm going to start in the middle. And you can just turn these into regular poinsettias. And I have some berries here. And hopefully I'll remember to show you that. But you could just make them a centerpiece. I just thought they were cute as candle holders because these type of flameless candles you have to pick up to turn on and off. And I found the little glittery ones at the Dollar Tree. I've seen them at different places, so 
if you want some glittery ones. If not, get the flameless candle and add your own glitter. You can do that. And the nice thing about doing one side, you can hold this without getting too much paint on you as well. You know, I can get your fingers into it like if you were just doing one or both sides. All right, we're gonna go ahead and dry this one more time here. I got that a little bit too close in my paint there. My plastic has started shriveling and I don't want to do that yet. Now on the inside of mine, I'm going to use a rose pink. You could use a deep color or whatever you wanted to. And I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to pounce. And I don't know if you can see that or not. Just pounce just kind of in the center of those. So we have that all done. We've got our color in there. And you can make the poinsettia, white poinsettia, and I, like I said, I think a magnolia bloom would be really pretty too. So we've got that done. I'm going to let that dry naturally while we work on our um, bottom leaf. Now I use the bigger bottle on this one. Like I said, you could use the other, the regular size. It's no problem. But we flip this one from this way to this way because we want these leaves going down. So I've already got one coat of paint on here. So I'm gonna get a second coat of paint. This is just Christmas green. And I'm not gonna worry about the inside as much because we're gonna have it covered up. And we're not going to see it quite as much. So we're going to get the outside and I'm making a mess here. So this must be a good craft. And make sure you get the edges. That's kind of what we want to get. And like I said, I'm not worried about the middle quite as much here. Now flip this way. It's harder to hold onto. And I'm using my dry board to set my wet, wet pieces down on so I don't have to worry about holding on to them. And then I'm going to use my lime green or my vibrant spring green just right in the middle there. Okay, so we've got that guy done. I've got to get a layer off before I can touch anything. Okay, now I'm going to put some veins on real quick here. And I'm going to use a candy bar color, which is kind of a red brown. And I'm using my liner brush and I added a little bit of water to it. And I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to work on this guy first because that guy's still a little wet. And I'm just going to go down the center and pull them to the sides. Another thing you could do if you have some colored magic markers is you could use these with colored magic markers. Just color them in, which I probably should have done would have been quicker anyway, but that's all right. And take more time than I am on getting these in. And this is really going to make it look more like a poinsettia because if you look at a poinsettia, you really see its veins. The veins really pop. And the veins are usually darker. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish these, putting these on, and then I'm going to get a darker, like a deep forest green, and put them on my leaves, my outside green leaves as well. I just wanted to show you 
Well, I keep looking at it and thinking if you're younger, you might know this would be a good Madonna too. Just, just saying, just saying. Okay, um, the difference between we've got this one taller and this one a little bit shorter, and we've got this one upside down. And see, these guys are going to be bigger than our littler ones that I started with. Okay, so I just wanted you to kind of see the size because I know I talked about it, but I wasn't sure that that would come through. Uh, we're going to start manipulating these now and I'm going to start with this one because we want this one turned down more and we're going to use our heat gun and be careful these do get very hot. Use all your safety procedures and if you need to use gloves use gloves too that might help a little bit but I've noticed when I heat them on the back they're going to curl more towards the back. When I heat them on the front they're going to curl towards more towards the front. So that's something to think about now like this one. I want this one to go backwards more than front. So we're really going to try and manip manipulate it and see how that's curling more towards the back. And we're just going to kind of curve it until we kind of think that that's where it needs to be. Each one of these, of course, is going to be different, and that's what flowers are all about. And you also, if you don't have them kind of coming the shape, you can pull them down just a little bit as well. See how we're really getting those to start to look like flowers? My husband also suggested water lilies. It would be really pretty done as water lilies. But look how that's already starting to open up. And I'm, I'm kind of hitting that big bubble first on the back. And so if I heat this side, it's going to turn towards that side. And see, then I can go back in manually and pull that down a little bit as well, too. I think I'd have liked it a little bit better if I would have had my a darker instead of that peak there. I'm going to try to make this just a little bit flatter. I'm going to heat that middle up just a tad. And we were talking about how when that middle is heated, you also can come in and cut it a little bit more. Now, I don't seem to have it at that point, or I've already come in as far as I want to. Now, that's not bad. I'm going to see. We might mess with that a little bit more but I'm gonna go ahead and start with this next layer now remember this is gonna sit inside of our other one so we've got to kind of, of get it there see how it kind of sits and we might have to bend some of those leaves back as well if it didn't quite get there now I'm gonna do not quite as much I'm going to start in the back, play with this. There is no right or wrong. I see how the leaves curl up on the sides. I just think this is a lot of fun. My daughter's in college and of course recyclable arts are really big right now and I've been trying to come up with my own things as well. So I'll try to do some more coming up too. a friend up in Northern California, Cheryl Gillian, that's a big fan that really likes the recycled stuff too. Now I'm just going to bring these in a little bit more. And I'm going to kind of see if that works in there and that really does. Of course it's going to fit in one place better than the others. That first position, I had it right there, and that's where it needs to be long. So, and you might want to wear a mask. There are a little bit of the plastic fumes. You may want to wear a mask just to be safe with that as well. Okay, now let's work on our bottom part. Now remember, our bottom part we want coming up. It's going down already, so we're going to work on getting it more up and we may see if these should have been on the other side or not and actually these are really shiny this way so if we decide to 
that's okay too because you can see how pretty that is now once we're done varnishing it we'll get that shine back to it but if you decided to paint it the other way there is no right or wrong on that And on these first ones I did, I made leaves just out of the same bottle I was working on and just glued three different leaves on. So again, take what I've taught you and do your own thing here. And I was worried about this guy being a little bit, he's not quite as tall as the first batch we've worked with. get him more down. There we go. Isn't this fun? <laughs> Every time you do something it's going to be different. Now I'm going to manipulate it up just a little bit. See that? There we go. I'm getting that curve just like the poinsettia flowers have in them. If it curves in too much, pull it out. Really be careful with your heat gun. It can be hot. I had an older one that was metal at the tip and I finally decided I can't use it anymore because every time I do I burn myself with the circle. So the new ones have plastic on the edges. That's a really good thing to know. So you want to look for that. Alright again where it kind of fits in here. If you knocked any of your paint off Go ahead and just put it back on. I like the silver in that. That's really pretty. And I think I would have liked my leaves a little bit bigger at the bottom, but that's kind of okay because on the flower themselves, they don't really show them as big anyway. So we're going to start putting this together. I'm going to do this guy first, trying to remember where I've got him. You also could E6000 this, trying to figure out exactly where which angle I have that guy at. And it is there, I just got it on high so it's going to have a little bit more. And if you needed to put something in between the two, or we can, what we can even do is heat it down just a little bit more. But that is setting up. And that kind of looks good right there. I did notice I have a little spot that the red is not great in. And I think I'm going to put it on these guys a little bit here. Alright, now another thing that we want to do is once we, uh, we're going to put some glitter on it and give it that holiday sparkle, you know me, you got to have that sparkle on it. And so I'm just going to take some tacky glue and I'm just going to do some here and there. I'm not going to do it on every one just to give it that holiday spirit. Got to have that holiday spirit. Stayed away from the glue a little bit better this year than last year. Last year I think I inhaled too much of it. I keep messing with my glue as it's trying to dry here. Shame on me. Oh well, we'll get this on and I'll worry about that in a minute. And I thought I had picked up my piece of paper, but that's okay. I do my glitter on a piece of paper. So we're just going to come back in here and I'm not going to do all of it. I'm just going to do one with the glitter. And put your glitter on all the way around. 
and then quit messing with it like I am and make sure it's all stuck together. I have this little guy right here where I knocked the red off. If you have any spots like that, just put it back on. Once you've got him all pieced together, then take him and spray varnish him good. You could brush varnish this guy. He wouldn't be too bad to do. Um, if you live where it's really, really cold, and right now we've been running about 18 degrees in the mountains in Arizona, I do have a video on how to spray varnish inside, so check that out as well. But this is our little recycled poinsettia candle holder. And then we're just going to turn the candle on and set it right there. And you can see, we'll get this candle going for you, how, and on this one you could even put one of the bigger candles in. Now I'm going to have glitter everywhere. The, the bigger glitter, glitter candles in as well and it would be really, really pretty. And isn't that beautiful? That's just a beautiful centerpiece and it will set right by itself on the table and you don't even have to worry about anything else with it. So that's just a really, really fun piece. So if you have any questions about this project, please email me at art at I'm sure I'm Miss Sparkly over here. And if you want to check out some more of our fun videos, you can visit our website where we have all of our products up at miriamjoy.com. And there's a video link and it'll take you over to more of these fun Christmas YouTubes. Merry Christmas and God bless.